UMBC Retrievers were crowned champions, totaling a record 900. Came the first ever number 16 seed to defeat a number one seed in an NCAA match. Kasai with the chip, and look at Halk with the run, and he just gets a foot on it. It's like a stone wall. It's incredible that the retrievers have been able to even. Welcome to the UMBC Coach's Corner. I'm your host, Paul Mittermeier. This is the first of 10 episodes this year featuring the coaches and student athletes here at UMBC. Today's show, all UMBC soccer. In our second segment, we'll meet women's head coach Vanessa Mann and also sophomore midfielder Danny Fuentes as well. But we start with the men's side and men's head soccer coach Pete Karenji, goalkeeper Quantrell Jones. Coach, coach Karenji, one of the newest members of the UMBC Athletics Hall of Fame. And coach, before we get to this year's team, talk about that whole thing and, and the honor of being in the Athletics Hall of Fame and kind of what that meant to you uh, this past offseason. Oh, it was obviously a great honor to have uh, my family and former players here. Um, and anytime you get into a Hall of Fame, um, that's a great reward for your career. Um, I was kind of surprised by it, to be honest with you. I, I, you know, you normally don't get it while you're still coaching. Um, but when it came to me, Tim Hall, and he said that he wanted to put me and Don Zimmerman in, obviously I was honored to go in with Zim. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a great, great feeling. But, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, something that you'll probably think more about when you're done coaching. Sure, no question. Uh, 2019 season is underway. Tough start for you guys. Uh, you dropped your first two matches. Uh, Coach, you know, you always are talking about bringing new parts into a team. Um, talk to me about the first couple games and, and kind of what, what concerns you at this point at, at the 0-2 start. Well, probably what concerns me is now that we played two games, um, looking back, we're a lot younger than I thought we were going to be. Mm -hmm. um, we've had, you know, and, and excuses. I'm not good at excuses, but we're putting four freshmen down on the field and guys are learning as they're going through it. Um, we also have quite a few sophomores out there playing on one of them's right here at Quantrill. Um, and they all can play at a high level. So I, I'm really, I'm still excited about the team and I'm excited about moving forward. Um, I think we got caught off guard a little bit this past weekend, um, but we still have some guys that played last year, you know, like Cesar Marconi, he's, he was obviously an all-conference player last year and hasn't played, he's been injured. Jordan Dove hasn't played and he was a starting forward. Sure. So when you're looking at players who haven't been out there yet, uh, those are guys who were key players in last year's team. So um, it's a young group that's uh, going to have to continue to try to get better, and I, I really believe we will. Um, I think we did well on the preseason, and maybe that fooled us a little bit too because sometimes you play well in the preseason and you, you feel like you can just walk out on the field and, and beat anybody. Um, but the game the other day, I just got down watching tape on it, and. We did a lot of good things, and uh, you know, it's the, it's the old coulda, shoulda, coulda won the game, shoulda won the game, or tied the game, um, but we didn't. And uh, you know, like I said, you learn from it, and uh, you move on. Let's bring Quantrell in. Quantrell, I guess, talk to me first about the you know the adjustment as a freshman, and then coming in this season as a sophomore. How much more comfortable are you, and, and relaxed, and and kind of knowing that you're you're the guy now, and you're you're the star? Well, like obviously, I have. Other players, I want to try and take my position, so it's always, you know, I have to be on my toes, always on that. But really, from adjusting from freshman year to now sophomore year, it's I've been built to adjust under pressure and to just take take it a day at a time, you know, like don't take anything for granted. I worked hard for this position, and I want to keep it. So, I mean, I, that's, that's what I do every day, work hard, and just do the little things right. You got an outstanding freshman season, I think 1.05 goals against average. Um, now you got some, we talked about the, the changes in some of the parts now. You know, uh, you got some different defenders. Talk about the adjustment of learning to play with new guys in, in front of you. Well, it's always hard at first because, you know, you don't really know your teammates at all. But once you start to build the chemistry and just the, once the other guys start to, like, get relaxed, then that's when you can start to really build and play and, you know, just enjoy each other as a team, you know, because at that point, once you're comfortable, it's like you know the other person, what they're going to do, their tendencies and all that, and you can play to your strengths. Talking about defenders, Coach, one of the great stories to the beginning of this season, Jordan Ehart, who tore his ACL last year. Um, you lost him for the end of the season, was able to rehab and got able to get back onto the field and be there ready to play for you guys game one this season. And for as good as he played the last two games, um, he really has just come back. I mean, he was just cleared in, in August. 
So you got to give him a lot of credit because uh, he's just a fighter and he'll go out and play. And, uh, you know, I, I give him a lot of credit because he played, I thought he played really well the first game, first two games. And like I said, he hasn't had that summer of obviously training, um, coming off that serious injury. Uh, he, he'll, he's, he's another guy. He's just one, one of those guys that's going to continue to get better as we go through the season. He's just getting his legs, you know, getting his legs back. You also have an injection of international players. Um, talk about the adjustment, though, from the game in Europe to what they're coming to play here in the States. Is there an adjustment to the style of play um, for your international players? I think it's a, a first of all, it's a lifestyle adjustment. Um, it, it's, you know, you've got two kids coming over from Iceland and the hottest it gets over there is 79 degrees and they, <laughs> and they arrived in Baltimore and it was 98 degrees. So um, I think they're training, they're adjusting to the heat every day, the, the, the academic side of it. Um, it's just a, it's a major adjustment, a lifestyle. Um, I think the soccer is, is a little bit of adjustment. I think college soccer in general is a different game than any game being played um, because of the substitution rule. So, you know, when you can put subs in and guy comes out, they're not used to that. They're used to if you come out, you got to stay out. Um, and it's something you got to always be talking about um, to your players because teams will pressure you a lot more because of the, the amount of players they can put in and then return to the, the first group back in. Um, and that's an adjustment, and I know Quantrell's had to make that adjustment. Um, you know, some of the guys I, I, I look at now today, and there's a great story on two of our players, professional players, who uh, scored goals, you know, Kadeem Dakers and, mm -hmm. and Sammy Kasai. And I remember when them, when they first started playing here, they were two guys that really had to adjust to that college game. Um, and I think once they done, they, they, they adjusted, um, the sky was the limit for them, and now they're both doing really well professionally. So. Saw the video of Kadeem's goal, an absolute bomb he hit from like four or five yards outside the top of the box to yep. the score. Um, you know, talk to me also about the, your brother combination now. Fans that come out, Jackson Betcher played really well last year for you guys. His brother Ryan joins him now on the squad this season uh, as a midfielder. The last uh, midfield or the last brother combination you guys had, Andrew and Dan Bulls back in the late 2000s. If if uh, Ryan and Jackson can be as productive as those two, uh, you guys you got something with those two. And the Bulls brothers, that was a great <laughs> combination. And and I think you know both of these guys. Uh, I think Jackson uh, is coming off of an injury. Another player who didn't play much in the summer because of his injury. He's got healed up. He works hard. Great, great student athlete. Um, a guy who I really feel like is going to is going to have a great year this year. And having Ryan and his brother around um, just is going to help him. But he's a great player himself, and he put himself in a position where you know he played the academy all summer long and played for the Philadelphia Union, a great club. And uh, I think the combination is really going to work. Quantrill, talk to me about off the field. Have you decided what uh, you want to study here at UMBC yet? Have you declared a major? What, uh, what do you think? <laughs> I've been thinking about a lot of things. I've just been talking about it with my family, and really just I'm still undecided just because you know, like it's a big decision, obviously, and then you have to go and study. And I've just been talking about it with my mom and my dad each day and talking about it with uh, the academic advisors just to see what path I want to go on. Outstanding. What do you, what do you, how do you hype yourself up for games? What do you do to get ready for games? Any uh, superstitions or anything? Not really, no. I just like listen to music and just, just stay to myself, really. I don't really talk much. I'm more of a man of action than talking most of the time. So just stay to myself and you know, just inner thoughts, like just mental notes on the field, off mm -hmm. the field, and just picture myself and what I can do. Awesome. Coach, a uh, couple more chances this weekend, a five-game homestand for you guys to start the season. Talk about St. Peter's, St. Bonaventure, and kind of what you guys need to do to get back in, in the win column. Well, I think we need to play. start off by playing a 90-minute game. You know, we played in spurts. We played uh, both games. The last two games we played in the second half, I thought we'd done really well, but we kind of dug a hole. Um, you know, we get behind, and then we got to fight and send players up and take chances. Um, that's not what we want to do, especially at home. I think you have to dictate the tempo at home. Um, and we try to make it an upbeat tempo because we feel like on our field we can play against anybody and be successful. Um, a little bit of that mystique has been lost this weekend, but we're going to gain that back. And I think we just need to have a good week of practice and training and uh, everyone stick together and, and good things will happen. No doubt. All games start at 7 o'clock at Retriever Soccer Park again this Friday and this Sunday. Uh, both 7 o'clock starts. St. Peter's on Friday, St. Bonaventure's on Sunday. Coach Karenji, thank you. Quantrell, thank you as well. Um, stay tuned as we go to break. Let's take a look at the upcoming home schedules for the men's and women's soccer team. That 
experience in Charlotte was amazing. It really was beyond the expectations of the world. It was um, dazzling. So much so that we all said the next morning, did that really happen? <laughs> so it was, it was a fun experience, a great pride for our students, um, combination of academics and athletics. And quite frankly, I think the best of the American East, the whole brand is about the combination of athletics and academics. It's important anywhere to spread respect, no matter where you're from. I mean, this is a safe place and you can be yourself. Nobody has to not be who they are. You can be who you are, whether it's gay, straight. It's about race, it's about religion and all that. We all need to respect each other, we're all humans. Love each other, be kind to each other, you know, care about your neighbors. You can learn so much, you know, about yourself when you're with somebody else that's not like you and, and a little bit different. joined by UMBC women's head coach Vanessa Mann and UMBC softball Danny Fuentes. How you doing ladies? Not too bad. Thanks for having us. You got it. You got it. Great win for you guys up at Mount St. Yep. Mary's. 3 nothing win. Vanessa, first of all, talk about the win and kind of getting that under your belt. Well, the win's always nice, but I, th I think this is a culmination of the last kind of eight, nine months in the journey that we've been on in year two. And and for us, it, this this really did stop back in January when the girls returned, and we've just been seamlessly rolling in now incoming freshmen. And, and for us, the big thing was that we coined this year, it was all about the ABCs, and for us, the ABCs stood for always be competing. So we're competing a lot more in practice, we're competing a lot more in the classroom, and competing uh, within the community, whether it's volunteer or, or whatnot. And Danny's been a huge part yeah. of your offense the, this year and even uh, as a rookie of the year last year. Talk about Danny and her contributions to the team. Yeah, for for someone like a Danny and, and actually that kind of rising now sophomore class, we we had to rely on them a lot last year and, and I've told them before that it was relying on them more than I, I would have liked. Um, but what that allowed in year one was t was for them to have the experience coming into year two that a lot of them, uh, if they were at other institutions, may not have had. So Danny's really just thrived of not only the spring, but but coming back and she she played really well for the Washington Spirit Reserves over the summertime and and really just hit the ground running when we got back. Well, Danny, talk to me about. Mount St. Mary's a goal and an assist. Talk, t set up your goal and talk to me about your goal up at Mount St. Mary's. Um, well, my goal wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the back line. Like they, they're constantly looking for the the forwards. And um, I mean, uh, Lauda played the ball to me through. She saw me running, and I mean, I think me and Lauda have that connection where we just know where we're gonna run all the time, and it it just happened. I mean, yeah. What about the, talk to me about the, the setting up the goal and the assist? Oh, same thing. Lauda, yeah. Lauda made that run. <laughs> same thing as last year. I, I saw her. I knew. I know the Mount St. Mary's back line is very sp spread out. So when she was making that run, I knew I could just slip her in with her speed. Talk to me about having a goal scorer's mentality and what that means, and and kind of no understanding and being able to finish and and put the ball in the back of the net. Um, to be honest, I'm. I get really scared one on one, but I just <laughs> I look at the goalkeeper. I see where her hands are going, where she's leaning towards, and if she's leaning towards the left, I slip her through the right. Yeah. Awesome. Um, first shutout since 2017. Yeah, um, we got two now. Yeah, talk, <laughs> talk about, you know, just the, the defensive yep. ability and, and, and starting to things come together back on the back side. Yeah, it was, you know, it was actually surprising, the, the fact that the first couple games going to two overtimes and... 
I didn't think we, we had the legs necessarily to be able to last that long, but what you did start to notice was the, the energy that the girls were bringing, whether it was uh, going into the first overtime or the second overtime. They, they just looked at us as a staff and said, yeah, we're ready to go. Um, whereas I think there was a lot of moments last year where it was we were kind of just holding on for dear life. And uh, I think it, going into whether it was the first or the second overtime this year, it was, yeah, we actually have a really good chance at scoring some goals and, and coming out of here with a win. Tell me about your goalkeeper situation because you're mm -hmm. going back and forth. Yep. Uh, both uh, Jay Wilkins and Alyssa Minnick have played. Mm -hmm. and, and Alyssa was the one that, that got the uh, the clean sheet on um, over the weekend. Yeah, we actually have three really good goalkeepers. So you can roll into their Morgan as well. And, and the way that they compete at practice makes my job at, when it comes to, to choosing who's ready to step up for that particular game day just that much harder. Um, so credit goes to those all, all of those three. Um, yeah, when it comes to kind of setting uh, who's ready for game day, we haven't really decided on who's kind of the out and out number one right now because the, it's just so close, which is great for us. And I, I think you were able to see as well with our starting lineups as well. We've been rolling different players in and that that's a good problem to have. Um, sure. So right now we're able to share the load a little bit more, which is great, especially with the non-conference slate. So I think by the time the conference slate uh, comes along, which is just in a few short weeks, we'll be we'll be in good stead. You no, know, it's crazy. We were talking about it. How much time flies? Yeah. You know, you go through preseason, <laughs> all of a sudden you look up, it's the season, and, yep. and you're all of a sudden you're into in conference play. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy how quickly it can turn around. I mean, when the girls come back on that August 5th, it's literally 16 practice days, and then that kind of first game is is up, and by the time you know it, it's the end of October. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you really have to make sure that you're ready, and you can't really win a season in a season. That's why I was saying the this has really been something that we started back in January looking forward to, to year two. Danny, I'll ask you the same thing I asked Quantrell. Talk about the, the transition from your freshman year to sophomore. Are, are you more comfortable now, or, or did you feel like you fit right in from the beginning here? Um, definitely, I just was a little scared coming in freshman year. Um, I didn't know what was coming. I didn't know what the schedule looked like. But now this year, um, I knew what it looked like, but I, it was kind of harder knowing the freshmen were coming in. You know, you have to build that chemistry with them and see if, like, we can be a winning team because last year I was looking at it, and it just, I mean, I didn't really see the energy that I see this year. So It's interesting because you come from a great program uh, in Montgomery County. You've played on national teams, right, on the under-17 teams. Talk about that experience and, you know, being a part of things like that. National teams. Oh, so well, well, you're, 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 you went to the academy, right, in, yeah. in France? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, it was a lot different. I, <laughs> I looked at those players, and I just saw that they had it off the bat. They had the touch. They had the, they had the shot. They had everything, all, an all-around player. And fitting in there, I mean, there was a lot of things that I was missing, and it was good to go there because you, you know what you need to train for. Mm -hmm. And that was, like, strength and touches, left foot. And it was, it was a really good experience for me. Oh, we talk about this all the time, though. Doesn't it make you a better player, though, to yeah. play with better players? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Your brother Kenny is here <laughs> at UMBC. Um, oh, first, first question, I'm going to throw this out there. This is one of those tough questions. Good thing or a bad thing? Um, it's a good thing, I think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how did that whole scenario play out? Did you, did you commit first? Did he come first? Was he interested first? Were you interested first? Or how did that whole thing play out? I committed first. He was in community college at the time. Mm -hmm. And when I was coming in my second semester as a freshman, he decided to come in just for school. So then he, he was talking to me about it the whole time. He was like, should I, should, I, should I walk on? And then I was like, sure. And I didn't think he was going to make it, but there he is. <laughs> he's, at, he's getting quality minutes in the first <laughs> yeah. two games as well yeah. for the men's side. So yeah. um, were you like, oh, no, my brother's coming to school, or were you ha happy about it? At first I was like, oh, no. But then <laughs> I think, I think we've, we have a better relationship now. Yeah. Okay, okay. You know, I, I, I have an older sister. I know the whole thing of going through that whole thing, too. Um, talk about some of your some of the things off the field. Um, have you thought about what you're going to major in or what you're going to study here at UMBC? Um, I'm back and forth with a lot of majors. So I'm not sure what I want to do yet, but I don't really want to set on something and then change, so I'm still deciding. Where How I close go. are you guys as a team? Um, on and off the field, the girls? I think we're really close, yeah. Um, I always hang out with a lot of people around this, like, 
Tina, I hang out with her a lot, and we always try to have like pasta nights, um, movie nights, stuff like that. Yeah. I guess the big thing too, Coach, is mm -hmm. trying to not only be good on the field, but give them experience off the field as well that they can yeah. take with them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and for a lot of it is just showing them what it can look like. Uh, we actually took the team down to watch uh, the Washington Mystics play in uh, in preseason. I think last year we took them to play some paintball. So it's getting them around each other a little bit more, just away from the soccer and, and just away from the school, just so they can have those in interactions with each other. And if we can cr if we can create the environment for them, it's it's really up to them to to embrace it and I think we've really got a, a great group of young women here. Big challenge on the horizon. Yep. Um, three more on the road, Towson, Lehigh, Longwood. Mm -hmm. Tough match at Towson. Coming yep, up. that's the only one I'm thinking about right now. So we're just getting ready for Towson. Uh, I was able to watch some of their film yesterday from uh, UPenn and, and they were able to play against the Mounts uh, last week. So they're going to be a tough team. Um, they're, they're well coached. Catherine's done a great job in her coming into year two. So we're going to have to be, we're going to have to be on, on point come Thursday. Doubt. If you want to come out and watch the women here at UMBC later on in September, Thursday the 19th, George Washington is here. And then, Coach, we talked about it, New Hampshire and Albany at the yep. end of the month. It's yep. conference play yep. coming up for the women. Coach, man, thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Danny, thank you as thank well you. for joining us. Also want to thank Coach Karinji and Quantrell Jones as well. Um, community, um, stay tuned. This is the one, first of ten coaches shows coming up here on Facebook Live. I'm Paul Mittermeyer saying so long. You've been watching the Coach's Corner here on Facebook Live.